The Australian lawmakers want to regulate DAO, decentralized autonomous organizations. Let's talk about the risks of stifling the emerging phenomenon of DAO and possible solutions. Hi, my name is Alexei Konosevich and you're watching Blockchain State. All DAO and fintech regulations we have seen in the world so far went down that bureaucratic path relying on conventional approaches and methods. The red tape. The difference between them is just about the tightness of the news. The problem is that new approaches to regulating this industry are not discussed widely in the society and among politicians. They are not on the agenda. But these concepts exist and I spent five years of my academic research working on it. The risk is that because these new concepts are not raised and they are not on the agenda of politicians and bureaucrats, so when it comes to regulating, they will refer to the existing methods, to something that they know. And this is not good because they know only the conventional ways of regulating. But DAOs appeared as the response to obsolete approaches, excessive bureaucracy and red tape. Let me explain this. When it comes to regulating a DAO as a company, what first idea comes up? That's right, the registry of companies. But who remembers why we need that registry in the first place? Will anyone question whether a DAO needs a registration at all? And here is the answer. Historically, the government took the role of that trusted third party that keeps the record about a company who is in charge, its address, its constitution, uh, the, the shares and the shareholders and so on. Because when it comes to legal issues and disputes, the registrar will take the registry out saying, hold on, I've got all the moves recorded. If the company commits a felony, its registration can be cancelled. Of course, registration is also needed for taxation. The public registry body keeps this data, ensuring its authenticity and safety. Back in the day, this required large storage with racks and folders, but nowadays the registry is electronic. It requires reliable software and data centers, cybersecurity measures and so on. Besides, there are some formal rules and requirements for the registration. So each registration is verified against these rules. And all this is the responsibility of the registry office. Now let's see what blockchain is. This technology can ensure an unprecedented level of protection for electronic records. Once a record is published in a reliable blockchain, there is no way to tamper with it. Besides, users publish and manage their data on blockchain without an intermediary. And this can be the most concerning part for bureaucrats. No one is precisely responsible for maintaining the ledger infrastructure. It is an open, self-organized and self-governed network with no authority. Even after 14 years of successful work with no stops, people still don't believe and accept that this is happening. So for DAO registration, you don't need any conventional registry because blockchain is the registry itself. I should say that not every blockchain is reliable. And here comes the role of the government in terms of regulation. First of all, private and permissioned ledgers, even though crowds call them blockchains, they are not blockchains in the original sense of the Satoshi Nakamoto invention. They are not immutable and decentralized. On the contrary, their design supposes that there is a controlling body, thus it is a centralized technology. The second problem is with blockchain themselves. Even being designed as a decentralized open network, there is still a big difference between the network with, for example, three nodes and 3000 nodes. They will have different levels of resilience to cyber threats. So the role of the government is to introduce regulations and standards to make sure that people understand that when they publish a record, say, on Ethereum, it will become immutable and protected by thousands of running nodes all around the globe. If you publish it on some private DLT network controlled by a cartel, 
you basically need to rely on their goodwill. So the conclusion for this part of the discussion is the following. With blockchain, you don't need any external registry database as blockchain is the registry and there is no need for the government to maintain this infrastructure as the blockchain network is self-sustainable. The users can publish and manage records on blockchain without a registrar and there must be standards that allow us to distinguish reliable blockchain systems. Let's go further. Compliance. Nowadays registration procedures are deeply formalized. I don't remember any procedure that happens at the discretion of a registrar. All the rules can and must be algorithmized and thus a clerk is removed from the process of making a record. In fact, in most cases it is already electronic and automated. So there is nothing new. The only difference is that this must be designed as a standard requirement for the development of a compliant DAO. Those who desire to work under the Australian jurisdiction must develop the code of their DAPs and smart contracts compliant with these standards. Replaceable rules. There are two ways to create a company. You can tailor your own company constitution, a charter and some other documents. But you don't have to do this if you opt into so-called replaceable rules. In some European countries it is called a model company constitution. Think of it as a typical company constitution written by smart lawyers and that can be applied in most cases. However, a true DAO works under the principle of code is law. There cannot be such a thing as replaceable rules written in a human language. But the rules themselves can and should be digitally implemented in the form of a machine code running and executing by computers. Can we deal with both? With machine algorithm and textual rules? Well, theoretically, maybe yes, but the main concern is consistency. If there is discrepancy between the written legal text and the machine code, the computer will not be able to read and interpret the text. It will execute the machine code. More so, the problem is that records on blockchain are immutable. You cannot change anything in the history of transactions or rework a transaction. Once the code is deployed, it is there forever. I will touch on this problem in a moment as it requires a separate comment. But the problem is in the discrepancy. Having equal legal force in both the code and the text will potentially create a legal conflict. If the lawmakers establish unconditional supremacy of a written text over the machine code, they will kill the whole idea of DAO. The correct call is that the regulator should not introduce the obligation for DAOs to have their legal documents written in human language. It may sound unreasonable. There will be a temptation of politicians and bureaucrats to be paternalistic to protect consumers, but this is the whole idea of the emerging digital economy and innovations. Those who want to enjoy the full power of blockchain technologies must have this right to experiment. At the end of the day, nobody is forced to do this. We will still have the conventional forms of business and the old-fashioned registry, well regulated and well established. The politicians should let the industry develop the code is law paradigm as this is potentially a greater future for our society as disintermediation and decentralization increase the economy's efficiency and reduce multiple risks. There are a lot of pitfalls on this path and if we want that future we need to get it through. By the way, you can watch my video about the DAO crisis in 2016 that led to the hard fork of the Ethereum network and my conclusions about it. Nevertheless, I don't support crypto anarchy. This is not a solution. On the contrary, all these replaceable rules and requirements are formalized enough to the extension that can be put in the machine code. So the role of the government is to establish mandatory standards for those DAOs that would like to operate on the Australian market. 
The second thing is that there are cases when a written legal text is necessary. It is a situation when the legal interaction goes beyond the program's code and requires integration with the real world. In this case, there must be uh, formal legal documents and a liable person responsible for delivering business promises to consumers and investors. You see, towards DAO there can be two types of events. An internal network event, for example, the transfer of a token in exchange for a cryptocurrency payment. It can be completely automated because both elements, the token and the cryptocurrency, are internal digital elements of the system. So if something is external towards the network, it will require human interaction and interaction with the real world. For instance, if a businessman issues tokens packed to a flock of sheep, these legal condition must be written somewhere in a human language, as the sheep is not a digital object, it's not a part of the network. Therefore, digital rights of investors, let's call it so, uh, can and should be automated in a DAO. Hence, they don't require any written legal terms. Non-digital rights and obligations must be intermediated by a liable person and described in a legal document. And I should say that many DAOs will have both the digital on-chain part and the off-chain part. Let me show one example. Suppose it is promised that token investors can vote and the voting is electronic on the blockchain. And the smart contract automatically executes the decision in a decentralized manner. In this case, it will not need any human assistance and hence doesn't require uh, a formalized legal document. It doesn't mean it will not be described in human language. This means the description will not prevail over the machine code. As a lawmaker, I would adopt the rule that prohibits misinforming DAO investors. A businessman may not say and promise to DAO investors something that is not encoded in the smart contract. This must be interpreted as a deception. When the digital world touches reality and cannot operate autonomously, all those cases will require a complete legally binding disclosure. And finally, let's talk about the problem of immutability. There is a common myth about the issue of uh, immutability. In blockchain, you cannot retroactively change past transactions and deployed code of a smart contract. That's right, but you don't need to change anything in the past. This is the fallacy. The system must be properly designed to address this problem. Instead of changing the existing records, you need to be able to add new records. All transactions are strictly chronological, because no one can change the order of blocks. So if any legal circumstances change, you don't change the past, you add a new record to your application. and. In the sequence of records, only the latest one will reflect the current state of affairs. In this way, you can resolve legal disputes and correct mere mistakes. And I explained the concept of jurisdictions on blockchain and how it works in this video. I should note one important thing here. This cannot be applied to relationships with cryptocurrency. Transactions with cryptocurrency as a native unit of a blockchain are immutable and there is nothing you can do about it. This is not addressable, or at least it's not that easy without compromising the technology. Everything I said about the proper design is about crypto tokens, smart contracts, dApps and DAOs which reside on top of a cryptocurrency. If you want to understand why it is so, please watch this video where I explain the fundamental role of cryptocurrency for all blockchain applications. You cannot change cryptocurrency transfer, but updates on blockchain applications are possible in the proper design which allows for publishing new records. The next element of the system is a trusted party. A trusted third party can be presented in application. 
In some cases, you won't even develop a mature system without a trusted third party. For example, how a person will transfer its inheritance after their death. There are many situations when we need a trusted third party. Here comes the role of registrars and this function uh, of the public body will not be replaced in the feasible future. The only thing that can happen here is privatization of this function, meaning that some of the functions can be performed by private intermediaries. And the best scenario is that there will be both alternatives, the public clerks and authorized professional private service providers. Surely it requires some formality, regulatory framework and again technical standards. And finally, all systems need an emergency break, an opportunity to reset and restart the system if something goes wrong, not the blockchain, but to restart the application on blockchain, to have a chance to redesign the system and introduce new rules. We don't want to repeat the DAO crisis, right? That will be provided with another technical solution and respective standards mandated by the regulation. All this I described in my previous videos. In this video I discussed the jurisdictions on blockchain, the basic principles of governance on blockchain applications and I also explained why the custodial model is not sustainable. And in this video I explained how to properly design systems with registrars and other trusted third parties as a part of a blockchain application. And this video elaborates on a blockchain database as a building block of any blockchain application. Thank you for your attention. Hit like and subscribe if you would like to know more. See you in the next video.